I'm Eric. And I'm Jamie. And this is Horrorscope, a podcast for people who love horror movies. And people who want to love them. I can't believe it. I can't look at how tiny my voice is now. Oh. The tables have turned. Aha! <laughs> Not literally, though, because I am on the same side as the table. That's but true, that's true. <laughs> metaphorically, or theoretically. <laughs> One of those. Philosophically. <laughs> okay, yeah. so we've been recording. We have, like, a bougie mic. and This entire time. We've been recording off of my Mac audio because I don't know how to use Audacity. <laughs> and JB the entire time has been like, Eric, you have a tiny voice. I was you like, you to gotta speak, speak up because his little sound waves are tiny and now mine are tiny. Yeah. How's it feel? Tiny! Does it make you feel like you have a little tiny voice, a little tiny throat? Yeah, a little Can't push tiny out a voice. Throat. Yeah. <laughs> Look at how small they are. Oh no. You're getting That's smaller okay. and smaller, you're fading. <laughs> That's okay. Nothing can, um, nothing can quell my uh, triumph today. But watching this shitty, shitty movie. Yeah, we decided to get really good audio for the shittier the movie. So that means that in the future, every time we do a better movie, we have to do worse audio. I see. So by the time we get to like... We've got that handled. Our our next episode on Halloween is just going to be like static. Okay, we'll record it through um, a tin can. I was going to say, what's worse than a Mac? (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, (laughs) honestly though, this MacBook Air, like when it gets working, it just like heats up and I could, I could fry an egg on this thing. Wow. Yeah. And that's a real Arizona mindset to have. Uh, yeah. We're watching Truth or Dare. Bloom House is Truth or Dare. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> put that put that production company's name on top of it. I offered to do the research for this one uh, because Eric is so distraught. And then he said, no, I already did it. So it's done. So tell me all about Bloom House is Truth or Dare, please. Oh, man, Jamie, there's not much. At some point, I just put, who cares? Uh, the that's not the that's not the journalistic attitude we want it's need. not so i decided to like kind of pull back a little bit and look at a bigger picture that seems a little bit more interesting because this is our first bloom house movie i think we've done yeah 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 that sounds and bloom right. house is like the shit right now it's like a production company that's like up there with a24 with like yeah. brand recognition people go see movies because it's a bloom house production kind bloom, of okay bloom house movies get out yes us yeah this Yes. Wish Upon, which was an option to watch. Unfortunately. Fantasy yes. Island, which we will watch. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, Wish <laughs> Upon is in the future. Upon Threat of Death. Um, what else? They uh, also, Happy Death Day. Happy Death Day, yeah. Because I know they put from the production company of Get Out, like, on everything. Yeah. So they got one winner, and then... They pretty much keep on, like, pushing out movies and eventually get one hit, and they're like, all right, move that into the title. So it's like it was, like, Get Out, and then, like, The Purge, and then they, like... Oh, and The updated. Purge. Okay. Yeah, so they... Going back, it's founded by Jason Bloom. Wow, Bloom House makes yeah. you think, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, he was in Hollywood for a while, and then the, like I think 2000, he founded the production company Bloom House. Um, and I like to say their business model is business first, marketing second, pleasure. movie third. No, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> business or pleasure? <laughs> it's the fourth one. Yeah. Okay, one more time. I wasn't paying attention. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to do my joke. <laughs> Folks, you just heard the summary of our friendship. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, get, I do the same thing, Come though. I just, I'm just looking for the end. Every word you're saying, I'm just looking for the punchline. I'm just trying to see, you know, swerve in there. Makes me think of the Fight Club quote. Wait, what? Fight Club. People aren't trying to listen to you. They're waiting for their turn to speak. Speak. So... <laughs> 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 So Eric has assured me he is getting drunk at least to watch this film. Just a little bit. I I mean I I have to like I'll be a little bit more <laughs> drunk than you, but you have to follow me on this journey. Yes, I will. Okay. okay. We have plenty of fruity drinks downstairs that we can steal from my roommate. It's perfect. Doesn't he? Does he follow the pod? I, he does not listen. <laughs> All right, that's good. He that's follows good. us. He did that much for us. He voted. He voted for Truth or Dare. <laughs> well, thank you. I looked. I checked the receipts. He's I saw who <laughs> voted for Truth or Dare and he not Wish Upon. This evening. My Wish Upon uh, followers out there, unite. You know, we'll watch it one day. Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, oh, no. So, Bloom House. <laughs> Business first, marketing second, movie third. That's how I, like, position it. Okay. And I think that that's... The, the the formula for most of these movies, I do think that he, because he's pretty much the whole idea behind it is making a bunch of cheap movies yeah. with just like full creator control sure. and just kind of pushing them out. 
And I think that that I mean that's great for doing like it for with horror yeah. because you horror movies always make money. They're always profitable because they're yeah. so cheap to make and they just yeah, make yeah. so much money back. And so he pretty much does that. And I think pretty much that he then takes a lot of that money and buys a summer home. But then he also takes some of that money <laughs> and then like finances bigger movies like the Get Outs or sure. the the Purge. The big movie that really like kicked it all off was Paranormal Activity. He did that. Oh right. Okay. So that's weird. It that's, feels like that's so, all marketing. It's like James Wan. This guy, that's it. I would say Jordan Peele's kind of gotten up there now. Well, that's true, but he doesn't have his own, like, I guess. James Wan doesn't really have his own. James I guess Wan that's is just, true. He's the creator. Because okay. he did Insidious, and Insidious is Blue Mouse. Okay. Shit. Wow. Purge, Insidious, Whiplash, that drummer movie. Okay. Also them. Uh, Get Out, Halloween, the remake, Black Klansman, uh, and then a bunch of other movies. Okay. This movie was one of... 15 movies that came out in 2018 under the Bloomhouse production. Wow, name. that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And that's like not They're just abnormal. chugging them out. Yeah. yeah. Blasting them out. But like, it, it works. This movie was made for $3.5 million. How much do you think it made? 15. Yeah? Up? Higher. 18. 20. 24. $95.3 million. No way. Yeah. Really? Yes. That's so much money. It made what? All, it made, it, I think it made all of its money back in the first day. Wow, I remember, so... Mid- my... Midsummer was $9 million, <laughs> and that was cheap. And then Conjuring was, like, yeah. 18. This was made for 3.5. I can't believe Lucy Hale didn't pull a little more... You would hope. A little more cash there. Maybe she was, like, $2 million Or of Teen it. Wolf. Yeah, what who the I heck? Found out. Teen I Wolf saw is in this. a trailer for this while watching The Bachelor. Shout out to Carter. It scared the shit out of both of us. It really did genuinely scare us, because we were, like, wine drunk and, like, eating a cheese board, you know, as you do on a Monday night. And then the creepy... <laughs> The faces happened and we both weren't expecting it. We were just like not. Can I see your best face? <laughs> <laughs> your mouth went completely sideways. It was the the May Gusta face. Wow, what a pull! <laughs> what a pull from yeah, Eric. Like, <laughs> You're looking at the mirror. I don't. I don't. I can do. I can do the upside down. Mm. I can't there see you the, go. The you just can't. Jamie can't was trying smile. to do it in the car. <laughs> this face, because I he, he didn't know what this movie was, and so I showed him. You showed him the trailer. Hey, shout out to Mikey for figuring out the mic problem. Yeah, thanks, Mikey Mike. Whew. Mikey Mike. So... Like Mike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... At Mike. This movie, yeah, it scared me, and I didn't like it, and I wasn't excited, but now I'm very excited. Perfect. It seems like the more I try to, like, be resilient to this movie and not like it, it only makes you more powerful. That's true. <laughs> That's, yeah, that tracks, absolutely. Because it was just like a casual, like, oh, truth or dare. I'm like, oh, no. And then it's gone from there to this point that we're at right now. Look, you get to be gleeful in all of the movie choices. It's I true. earned this. It's true. I watched The Conjuring and The Exorcist. Back to back. Back to back. Yeah. I earned some trash. You had to talk about The Exorcist twice. Yes! <laughs> you I didn't want to talk about it once. We didn't even know we had another audio curse. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been handling, like, three curses at once. I earned this. Tell me more. Made a ton of money. Is that it? It made money. It, but th- yeah, it's crazy because it was still like even even ninety five point three isn't a lot of money. It, it, that's like it placed uh, really? seventy six in the gross highest grossing movies in twenty eighteen. Oh, in the whole year, I thought yeah. you were gonna say like horror movies. No, no. So it's like it's like they don't. They're not super successful. But again, they're made so cheap. It like Roger Corman was a he's he produced movies from like the fifties to like a long time. I, I, okay. I didn't do research he produced on him. this? But no, he, he, he had like a model, similar model to of making just a bunch, of like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of like really cheap movies. But okay. they were made so cheap, made much, much money. Yeah. Canon I mean, was like that to too in it. the 80s. Canon was a famous uh, production company that would pretty much sell a movie on a poster and then finance the movie that they pitched before. This has a bad poster. I'll say that. I feel like posters, like poster art is a hit or miss. And I think so too. I think it's probably going to be a lot of misses on these cheaper movies. Yeah, I'll Which say, is crazy yeah. when you have a sea of artists. Like, you have, like, Pinterest, you have Etsy, and, like, you can't yeah, find somebody to make fiber. a good poster. Yeah, this poster sucks. It's Lucy Hale being like, Ooh, and then there's, like, a big question mark over her. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I remember seeing sucks. that. Sucks. I'm yeah, looking at it like, right now on Wikipedia. Why isn't it just the person smiling? <laughs> no, that's a reveal. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, they, they nicknamed it the William Defoe grin on set, which shows that that's they really mean. took it seriously. That's not. It's pretty spot on. Have you seen William Defoe? Yeah, he looks like the Snapchat filter with just the mouth. All right. Yeah, yeah that's fair. That's it. Oh. William Defoe's amazing man, with an amazing face. Um, yeah, it's directed by Jeff Wadlow, 
That sounds familiar. Who did Kick-Ass 2. Okay. And the true me- memoirs of an international assassin, the famous Kevin James what? Netflix original movie. What? Wow. I thought I, thought I was going to recognize Ke- that dude. Hey, well, back it up. Shout out to Kevin James' YouTube channel. Check it out if you have it. It's actually, it's got some good jokes in it, especially his sound guy stuff. It's surprising because I've never found that man funny. Oh, see, he directed Bates Motel. Oh, there we go. Oh, another Bates Motel connection. I guess yeah, we got to watch it. See? No. guess we got to watch Absolutely Incest not. the Musical. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> I think not. Okay. Well, I have the wiki. Perfect. It sounds like you are stalling so we don't have to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking open a cold one. Hold Love on. That. I need it after. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going to be so crisp. Okay. Truth or Dare, also known as Bloomhouse's Truth or Dare, is a 2018 American supernatural horror film. Again, directed by Jeff Wadlow and... Written by Michael Reyes, Jillian Jacobs, Chris Roach, and Wadlow. That's so many people. The film stars Lucy Hale, Tyler Posey, Violet Bean, Hayden Setzo, Landon Leboern, and follows a group of college students who play a game of truth or dare while on vacation in Mexico, only to realize it has deadly consequences if they don't follow through on their tasks. That's it. It was released on Friday the 13th. That's pretty good. Should have made a Friday the 13th movie, Jason. You fucked up. Yeah, come on. You, the well, you just got hit Halloween. I um know the plot. I know the whole plot of this movie. I don't really remember super well, but I know the rough plot of it because I read the Reddit. I don't know the plot of it. I know. I'm so excited. Can I can I do my predictions right now? Yeah, please. They it's gonna be like a discount. It follows or Final Destination where they're playing a game, and then there's probably like a new guy, and then he makes them play the game, and then they get cursed, and then they all poorly choose dare a bunch of times uh, but then they figure out they can choose truth but there's gonna be some bullshit in there about oh you can't pick truth because like that's how you beat the game and then they all die and then it's probably gonna have like an uplifting ending but then oh smash cut something scary happens somebody smiles weird and then it ends and you haven't read the plot <laughs> <laughs> question mark <laughs> and you haven't read the plot <laughs> Seen, I've just seen a movie before. <laughs> a singular one. <laughs> well, we'll just see how that goes. Anything right. else? Let me scour I, the Wikipedia for any interesting information so, about yeah, this film. I, I have a love-hate relationship with IMDb trivia because sometimes you have these golden nuggets where it's yeah. just like, that's so interesting. And then you move on, like scrolling through Reddit. But most of the time it's like, this person was supposed to be in the movie. This person was yeah. supposed to be this cast. This one had the most ridiculous... It was just about the grin. It's just everyone talking oh about the grin. Oh my God. And if you like, don't know what we're talking about, they have like a... How do you not know what we're... T- I don't know. Google truth know. or dare. I don't know. There's it's the like one a, thing. When they're being possessed or whatever, I don't quite know. Um, they do this like really goofy looking smile and it's supposed to be scary. It filmed in a month. All right. They only had to use like 5% CGI on Lucy Hale and the other guy's face because they did the face so well. Damn. Is that real? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. We, okay, Ew. so we, okay, I do have one point. I'll bring... I guess we could bring it up now if we want to just... <laughs> if we want to just talk about something. Uh, Jason Bloom... Uh, I admire his business. He seems like a straightforward businessman and has given platforms to many great horror movies. But his, the only thing that's come up that I know of uh, is that he put his foot in his mouth at one point and said that he would love to hire female horror directors, but there are none out there. Okay. Which then caused everyone to be like, there are, you're just not looking hard enough and yada yada. And there is there is an article that we were looking over because Jamie was tired of terrible male directors. Yes. And the it. first one I saw that popped up was 15 women horror directors Jason Bloom can add to his list. Oh, Which no. is very nice. Well, that's good. Yeah, he better now. Well, he didn't make, right after that happened, the next year they made the Black Christmas remake. Yeah. Which was female directed and written by the host of Switchblade Sisters. Wasn't it bad, though? Yeah. Ooh. I didn't see it, but... <laughs> Switchblade Sisters is a podcast that we were talking about earlier today. Yeah. Um, (laughs) This is from a Variety review that made me even more excited to watch it. It's a scare-free horror film. The movie isn't scary, it isn't gripping, it isn't fun, and it isn't fueled by any sort of clever compulsion. It's just a strangely arduous exercise that feels increasingly frantic and arbitrary as it goes along. Jamie, do we have to buy this movie? Do we have to buy it? Is it streaming? I don't know. (laughs) Oh, shit. I'll pay for it. (laughs) I'll buy it. I'll buy this movie. Okay, we're going to watch this movie. I'm excited. It's my first choice. (laughs) (laughs) Jamie hasn't had any sort of input throughout this entire podcast. (laughs) This is what I choose, so that explains that. (laughs) Okay, let's watch it. 
Hey y'all, it's time for everyone's favorite, content warnings. This movie's pretty tame on deaths and scares, remember it's PG-13, but we wanted to warn you about gore, eye trauma, and rape. Also this movie gets a huge old warning on suicide. The character has a father who died by suicide and contemplates killing herself. We see her literally staring down a loaded gun. We didn't talk about it on this episode at all, but honestly it sucks, so if you're watching along with us, be careful. Take our word for it, this movie's not worth getting triggered over. This week, we donated to Poder in Action, which is an organization local to us in Arizona. Poder in Action's mission is to build power to disrupt and dismantle systems of oppression and determine a liberated future as people of color in Arizona through our lived experience, leadership development, and civic participation. They're a really cool organization, and this movie uses Mexico as a mystical, spooky, backwards kind of set piece, which sucked. So we wanted to donate to a group doing great work directly in our community. Give them a follow and send some money their way if you're enjoying the show. Okay, we have watched the film. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling, Eric? I mean, yeah? It was... Okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> we Eric literally did, just watched the ending. So Eric like... did throw stuff at the end. And he said, you stupid, and he threw a pillow. <laughs> Jamie, um, Jamie, I only have one question for you. Oh, yeah? This is a little early to do this. He's trying to... <laughs> <laughs> I don't love the face. I truth, still don't love the face. Truth or dare. Okay. Truth All or right. dare. Truth or dare, dare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this was a bad one, y'all. It was good. Yeah? It was great. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you want to do your recap? <laughs> yes. Okay. So a group of friends goes to Mexico for spring break, and what was her name? What was the lead's name? Becky. No, come on. Yeah. It wasn't Becky. Marky Turth. was the blonde girl. Dearth. <laughs> Dearth or Dearth. <laughs> um, Olivia. Olivia. Yeah. Olivia um, is kind of a goody goody two shoes and everyone's like ah, you want to go to habitat for humanity and she's a vlogger this is important later and um they go to mexico and some guy talks her up at a bar and then they go with him to a creepy abandoned church and play truth or dare and then he's like you play the game or you die and you truth or you dare you die and she's like what and then they come back from mexico and then all of the friends die one by one final destination style ish after doing or not doing the truths or the dares. Um, and then, ugh. And then it's her, she's in love with her friend's boyfriend, and then she has to have sex with her friend's boyfriend. And then, um, the friend, her friend's dad, her best friend's dad killed himself, and the best friend is also cheating on her boyfriend a bunch. Whatever. How does this, any of this matter? Whatever. So, the dad, it's revealed that the dad killed himself because he came on to Olivia Gross. and Olivia said he should kill himself and then he did huh and so truth or dare yeah and then uh Marky's like oh, that sucks and then the only sad moment or compelling moment of the movie is their friend Brad who Eric asked why he was dressed so poorly because everyone's wearing really <laughs> random outfits and he's wearing like fucking old navy <laughs> lame button downs but then he is forced by the demon to come out to his dad who has been formally described as homophobic, but then his dad's like, I love you, son. And then he has to force his dad to beg for his life and he steals his gun. And then he gets shot and he dies. That was the only compelling part of the movie, in my opinion. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that if you happens. you call that compelling? I think so, but then right after that That's is like the, the reveal. That's like the dollar menu of compelling. Yeah, but we'll take it, you know, when the bar is so low. Um, <laughs> and then... Oh, they talk to another girl who is the curse, too, and then they find the original guy, and then they go back to Mexico, and then they're trying to make him... Oh, and then they... Fuck. I'm bouncing all over the place. It doesn't matter. It matters so little. Um, They talk to... They drive to Mexico a lot. They drive to Mexico back and forth, like, three times. I'm looking up the drive time. Hold on. <laughs> and then they talk to um, the lady from the curse, and so the original curse is that um, there were a bunch of girls in a convent and then the priest would like rape them is what it implied and then one of the girls yeah it said his his pleasure was our pain oh that's right yeah he so was the priest is like kid, like uh, grabbing and raping the girls and killing them cute. and so then they summon a demon 
and then the demon's name, what was his name? Orthrax? Carthax? Uh, uh, Carfax K- no, the demon. Carfax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm Carthax the demon. Cal- Califax. <laughs> listen, listen, he makes you play games that kill you, but the deals he gets you on cars. Oh I my mean, god. I mean, honestly. It was, it was, it was Calix. Calix, Which okay. he referred to as a white suburban mom's name. For yes, her. yeah, like Braylon <laughs> and Calix to pick them up from soccer practice. Um, and so that she reveals that she um, had to cut out her tongue and leave it as a sacrifice in a jar. And so then they get the original guy, whose name is Carter or Sam, depending on who you ask. And then they drive him. And then the boyfriend, who is Tyler Posey from Teen Wolf, who we just called Teen Wolf the whole time, um, he gets a dare... And when they get the dares, they make this, like, crazy... Ho- ho- yeah. This, stop doing it, Eric. <laughs> stop it. Okay. They make this crazy face, and then um, the people who ask the dare don't aren't aware that they did it, but the person being dared knows that Whatever. Okay. And so then he gets a dare to kill one of the girls, and then um, he doesn't, and then he slits his own throat, and then he stabs the other guy, and then he dies, and then his corpse asks his girlfriend truth or dare, which kind of sucked. And then she gets a dare to shoot her friend, and then she shoots her in the arm or whatever, and then the friend is like, truth or dares the demon? <laughs> the main girl is like, you have to answer once what you are asked. Play. I mean, honestly, yeah. And then she's like, yeah, asshole. She calls the demon an asshole, and the demon says... That's like if you were watching The Exorcist, and it's like, I'm gonna possess the demon. <laughs> that, the mean, demon's like, what the fuck? That's kind of what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of what happened. Um, yeah, and then... The demon, here's what I don't understand, because the demon was like, okay, um, that guy who we stabbed was the only guy who could fix it, and now, so he's like, either everyone who was playing needs to die or more people need to play, but it didn't indicate that they would be off the hook. But then the end of the movie is her making a YouTube video explaining the rules, and then it, like, shoots around, and there's people watching it, like, Big Ben is in the background. <laughs> Eric is holding his head in his hands. And then they're, like, in Tokyo, and then she's like, truth or dare? And then one of the people watching gets the face, uh, smash, sh- smash cut to the credits. End of film. That was all over the place. Group gets, group of friends gets cursed. Girl, who is all high and mighty, about doing good things. I, it was very heavy handed. Doesn't do good things. And then decides to sacrifice everyone for herself and her friend. That is the film. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> Eric <laughs> thematically reached for a bottle of vodka. Um, Eric, what did, what did you, so I knew the plot. Okay. Roughly. I didn't remember a lot of it. I read it like two years ago when it came out. Yeah. So I knew the tongue thing. I knew the ending and I knew one of the deaths. Um, I knew about the friend coming out. And then um, I knew that was it. Yeah, I think that was it. But the deaths weren't even... It was PG-13. We looked it up because they say screw you several times. And we're like, okay. So we looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? what? Yeah, Eric, what did you think? You hated it. Man, all right. Um, Tell me everything. I get the position you're in after watching these movies now because it's like I need to think about truth or dare, but I don't want to. I don't want to think about it. Wow. Um, Oh, how the tables turn. Oh, how the (laughs) turntables. Yeah, so this movie, Bloomhouse's Truth or Dare, was a film. Look how short my notes are. Perfect. My notes are like five lines. I think this movie was competently shot. Yeah. It looked good. Yeah. The actors did a good job. Wrong. I think I think they did the best <laughs> with what they were paid. Not to all do. of them. Who do you think was bad? Lucy Hale. I mean, was super bad. Pretty Little Liars. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she. I thought everyone. I. I think for this type of movie, they did pretty good. Okay. For I this type of, of like for too. a three point five million dollar movie. Sure. They were serviceable. And that's what Gross. most of this movie is. I think that this movie is bizarre. There's a few movies out there where they, like, the they, the whole premise of the movie is the rules. Yet, all those movies do is question the rules. Yeah, Eric was like, you're going to love this movie because of the rules. And I was like, what made you think I don't love this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Loves the rules. The girl, uh, Lucy Hale, starts freaking out in the very beginning. The second things yeah. start going off. Yeah. Yeah. Very Jamie mood. Uh, so it's the perfect Jamie movie. Is it the perfect Eric movie, though? It wasn't the, the perfect question. Jamie movie. It's the perfect Jamie movie. She said it. She declared it. Uh, there's just, like, a few things I, I was confused by. Yeah. And found very... I found the, the faces very amusing. I know. They were, they were like... 
it really, it scared me once when I saw the trailer two years ago because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. But like in the movie, it was not ever scary. It was always comedic. Yeah, it, it was, was very funny. funny. It was. I think that there was one good scare only and you didn't see it because you were yelling at something and looking at me yelling about it, um, <laughs> about how bad it was. But she like walks by a doorway and then there's someone in the room and then she walks by it again and then no one's there, but then they jump it's out and get her. Type of jump yeah, scare. it was great. But besides that... Great is charitable. Which made, it was fine. It made no sense. Okay, so let's yeah. establish the rules. Okay. You play the game Truth or Dare yes. with another person. Wait. What? That doesn't what? make any sense. This movie <laughs> makes no fucking sense. So the rules are established that in order to play the game. <laughs> you look like you look like Charlie and it's always sunny with the board behind you. Listen, Truth or Dare. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Let's try so, to figure this out. The basic rules that were established at the very beginning of the movie. Yes. The very beginning. That you play this game. That you have to be lured into this uh, monastery in Mexico. Yes. And you have to play the game Truth or Dare. Yes. And if you play with new people, they join the game. Yes. So that makes your turns kind of go a little bit longer, which has been established. Enough. It's like it. This is like sorry spoilers for it follows. This is it follows. You know, like but like worse. Oh no. Okay, maybe and that's our next movie. We're like, you like lure people in. Oh, we're watching Halloween. Okay, yeah. we'll watch it soon. Yeah. yeah. It's a great movie. So much better. <laughs> and that has rules issues too, but you forgive them because it's a great movie. This movie, no forgiveness. <laughs> so it establishes in the very beginning that you go to this monastery after luring people in and they make them play the game. Not after the luring people. You don't have to lure people in. That you was one of his dares. To lure them? Mm-hmm. Was that? Yes. So wait. So it makes less sense. So he didn't even, his dare was to find a new group of people to make them play. That was his dare. It wasn't a rule to try to get out of it. Because then he was still playing, and then his friend was still playing, too. The girl who ends up killing herself. Okay, okay, okay. It doesn't make any goddamn sense, because there's that, okay, no way to end it. Yeah, so that means... the that, demon says... The way I interpret it is that in order to get more people in the game to prevent you from getting a turn sooner, is getting more people to the monster. That's true. So you do yes. that... And then you have more people play. They then later establish, because the number one question is, why don't you just always pick truth? Yeah. Because they're... The demon wants to kill people, but it wants the game to continue. I don't know what the demon's goals is. I think the demon's goal is just chaos, I think. Cool. Yeah, because it's like, oh, we tried to control the demon, and then the demon um, possessed the initial nun girl, um, and then she, like, big murdered the priest. But then they're like, and then the demon wouldn't stop. So then all the nuns started killing themselves. Yeah. Okay. So then you, you keep on playing the game. You Why only... wouldn't they just murder the priest normal? Which doesn't make any sense. Like, just I get... normal murder they, were they, they, weren't, they weren't playing truth or dare with the priests and the girls, right? They said they were playing childish hide, games. Hide and go seek. Because the ones he found, yeah. he So molested. the friends the friends trashed the monastery. So unleashed to the my demon. understanding, they unleashed it. And they set the rules that it makes it more interesting. So you can't have multiple people What if they truth. were playing Duck, Duck, Goose, though? What yeah, would have happened? Duck, he did pitch Duck, Duck, Goose. <laughs> that would have been bad. Duck, Duck, Goose, goose. with, like, chainsaws. But then you could have just been, like, Duck the entire time. Like, yeah. Duck, Duck, Duck. And then you just had to say well, Duck Well, here's the, the thing, time. too. So her plan to get more people to do it, she's just going to be waiting the rest of her life to get Truth or Dare again. Which is, yeah. Horrible. Yeah. I mean, that's worse. That's much worse. I'd rather die. Would you rather die? I'd rather big die. No way. I'm bad at horror movies. I'd throw in the towel. That's a half life. You're just like waiting your whole life. So let's after ex- you go viral, let's explain real quick. Also, she would be arrested. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because wait, no, hang on. What does this imply for the rest of the universe? If the whole world has seen this, it would be trending. And so then, what does that imply? It's like she's a mass murderer because a bunch of people are going to start having this happen. So it would disrupt the whole world order. Okay. Can we explain what we're even talking about? That's why I was trying to say wait. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, I said that. I said that. I said that at the end, that she showed them a video. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much that they eventually figure out that Carter, who was the guy who lured them in, is Sam, who was the guy who trashed the place and unleashed the new demon. Yes. And they found out the way to trap the demon is to get this little pot with a little ICP logo on it mm. with the smiling demon. Yes. You got to cut out your tongue. You got to put it in this pot. You got to melt some wax on top of it. Boom. Boom demon gone and so they're like cool this this old lady nun did it um let's get sam to do it they get sam to the monastery he goes to cut out his tongue but then gets stabbed by the boyfriend yes and so that i guess prevents the demon from ever being captured again yeah which is dumb um 
Well, then the implication, too, is that since we watched this, now we are also cursed. Which I hate in movies. It's like chain mail. That's, that's just the plot of the ring. That's just yeah. the ring. <laughs> yeah. This movie's just everything else that's better. Yeah. The ring is better. It follows better. Anyways, what happened with this movie is that they just, they just somehow come, came up with the fucking idea to distort the face to look like Aphex twins. And then, the, <laughs> and then they also say, too, she's like, it looks like a weird Snapchat filter. And I was aware. like, God damn it. Yeah, it does. It feels like nobody on this film, the producers, the directors, the writers, or the actors, believed that this movie was actually scary. I did not feel like convinced that anybody actually yeah, thought no. that that face in this movie is actually scary. No. Everyone was giggling at it the entire time. I think, yeah, I mean, you said they made it for preteens to go see at the mall with their friends. Yeah. And they did, and it Because they play, they play this game, and they're like, ooh, the demon's gonna get you. We're Ew, gonna, I would hate that. We're gonna go to Spring Break and go to this ancient monastery and trash it and then wake up the demon. Yeah. She loves her friends so much that she... Posted because they established that she has a YouTube series for her uh, Habitat for Humanity Habitat vlogs. Humanity. Yeah, and so she she then sends out a viral video that is seen across the world as we see via green screen that everyone's watching it. And I guess everyone then is part of the game, which I thought was established that they had to go to the monastery, but I guess not. It's just anybody. Yeah, I guess. Well, that's. I mean, like this movie cares at this point. The question they just needed to end it. So then that means. Just like so many people play it, and it's it, and it would disrupt the world order. Jamie, it broke me. She's a war criminal. It broke me, Jamie. <laughs> this movie broke me in so many ways. Wow. The moral is don't talk to men because if she hadn't have talked to the guy at the bar, we have three rules. We have three rules. Don't talk to men. Get your dick out because that's one of the dares. The guy's supposed to get his dick out, and everyone's like, "You're wee wee small," and then he's like, "No," and then he fucking dies. What was the third rule? Did you not write it down? No. <laughs> okay, we got two rules. <laughs> yeah, two, two. Don't talk to men and get your dick out. <laughs> that is that's very not. bad. Oh, don't trust viral videos. Oh, that's Yeah, funny. so like if you just never check Twitter. Yeah, just don't be on social media. Because we're social media managers. <laughs> uh. Ah, yeah. This movie was bad. It was bad with a capital B. It was great. It's like it's like so layered. It's just like such a dense movie, Jamie. What do we all right, what do we think the themes were? <laughs> <laughs> what I think themes, themes well, are truth or dare. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> I think it's important to point out, so in the beginning she gets asked a question where it's like, Would you rather kill the entire population of Mexico and we survive or everyone here dies and then everyone else survives? So Jamie, this and movie... she and she's like, That's the only there's only one choice. I would have all of us die and then she does the opposite really makes you think, Eric. Okay. okay. I have two points. I have two points. I have You're not as good as you think you are. That's the pr- that's the yeah. point of the no, movie. No, okay, yes, thank you. So yeah. I'm gonna make this movie so elevated, it's gonna be on the level of the exorcist. I Just can't do wait. it. So one, it is about that. It's about, like, everyone's altruistic intentions, but not being able to follow through with that. Everyone likes to think, like, oh, I would, like, I would jump on the grenade if that ever happened. Like, I would I'd self-sacrifice sure. for the people I love and everyone around me and blah, blah, blah. But then, like, push comes to shove. You wouldn't. You're all selfish. How dare you? And that's what this movie applies. It's very nihilistic in that sense. Um, point two um, is that this movie is about, um, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> Oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> oh okay. my god, okay. what? I, I, I recontextualized this movie in the very beginning. Okay. By the way, it takes seven hours if you live in LA to go to Rocky Point, which is I assume is where they're going is Rocky Point. Yeah. And I don't know any place close. That's a long Seven hours. They were just driving back and forth. They yeah. were just kind of just driving. Yeah, they did twice. It was whacked. And the demon had, like waits. The demon's very That's what I was about to courteous. say. Like why wouldn't it? Do truth or dare with them in the car. It just waited. That's a good way to kill time. When you're on a road trip, you play truth or dare. And the, what, the demon's just waiting? Bored? What if it... Okay, this is my pitch to you. That I recontextualized this movie at the very beginning as if they were going to spring break during the pandemic. Okay, and that sure. Makes, that, that really makes the movie so much better than it is. Because right now, people are like going out to beaches on 4th of July and shit while there's like a coronavirus and they're denying its like effect and plausibility of spreading it. Sure. And... That's what this movie is, right? Like, it's, like, a bunch of friends that, like, go to Mexico and they put themselves in a situation that causes them to spread this disease. And instead of, like, taking the L and, like, accepting that, <laughs> they, like, spread Don't it to everyone else. Tired. They just don't wear their masks. Are you your know? arms tired? From carrying this movie? No, from all that reaching. <laughs> <laughs> 
This movie's so fucking good. <laughs> Colleges will be playing this movie for their students. What is your... What my, you? my main point is what happens if the demon asks you a bunch of truths and it falls in love with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Eric's strategy would be to seduce the demon. <laughs> like, what if it like starts to get to know you, you know? Because the demon proved already, because well. it did it did establish that you have to, it's, it's two truths and then you have to tell Dare eventually. Uh, but it did establish that you have to do that. But then it did the bullshit thing that everyone yeah. does in Truth and Dare, which I appreciate the movie acknowledging, is somebody eventually dares you to tell the truth. That's true. Which is a sus move. That's true. And that's how you know it's a demon, because they don't, they don't play the We should have done a rules. drinking game. Jamie, we played some we sort of... <laughs> The game was just that we drank while we watched it. We also leveled up because we ate dinner while we watched this movie. Real Ernie move, as yeah, I Yeah, it was a real it. Ernie move. So, look, that just shows you how not scary this movie is. Not a, It's funny. I laughed more than I cried. Yeah. And I cried because I laughed so hard. That's, yeah. I mean, we don't have a lot to say about this one. I it's do, be a Jamie. Short episode. I do. Teen Choice Awards picked this for best <laughs> best drama movie and best drama movie actress for Lucy Hale. Come on. This is our first ever Teen Choice Award nominee. That's true. They didn't nominate Hereditary, those cowards. This made a, oh my God, a Teen Choice Awards. <laughs> play a clip. Like, play a clip of oh Tony Collette giving it. We need to watch that soon. Um, it made a, I mean, it made a fuck ton of money. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was kind of, it was way too long. It was an hour and 40. So, hearkening back, yes. It was way too long. Yes. It, it is insane. It needed to be like that an hour and 15 it. minutes. The, 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 the art of an hour and 30 minute long movie has been lost. There's a movie that came out last year called Crawl. It's that like... Oh, the Gator film. Gator film. I won't talk about anything about quality of that film. But I will say that movie was an hour and 30 minutes long. That's and for funny. that, it deserves an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like movies don't understand how to be short. Like, they don't what understand their own limit. Out of this. Don't ask me that, Jamie. That's true. Because I would say, oh, okay, how, would we, how would we have made this good? How do you make it good? <laughs> nice. You have, okay, man, all right. So you'd have to yeah, cut let's the, make it good. You can't, you can't do the creepy faces because that's the confusing part. That's true. And also it has red eyes and then the creepy faces just to make sure that you didn't think they had fucked faces. <laughs> you know, like what if you're like, oh, they just look ugly. No, that's weird. true. Cause they, they use like Lucy Hale as like the main person for like all the things. Yeah. Cause she, her face is most distorted. But when they showed other people's faces, they just had somewhat of like a bigger grin. Yeah. Like, I feel like it wasn't that distorted. And then they had, like, a distorted voice, too. It was very dumb. Yeah, yeah, because it's so confusing on the fact... Okay, like, you come up with the script. Like, when did the faces come into play? Like, did they have the faces, then they wrote a script around it, or vice versa? Because, like, the faces aren't creepy, but they made such a point of it. And it has nothing... Like, doing a smiley face has nothing to do... It, It looks like the demon. That's what the demon looked like. That, I mean, that's why. But it has nothing. I mean, it, that was it. I think they had a gimmick, oh and they're God, like, "We must Jamie, construct no. a film around this gimmick." Jamie, you just dared me inadvertently to do the worst thing possible. <laughs> What's that? It's to eventually watch the inevitable sequel to this movie to see what the <laughs> demon looks like. Truth is too. <laughs> to see like the demon like come out and have a dumbass smile on its face. <laughs> Electric boogaloo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think they had the gimmick and they wrote the premise around it and they grabbed, they're like, okay, that worked and It Follows, this worked and that, you know, like all the stuff. Um, this is a scary game. Teens will like it. Um, the end. That was it. That was it. Yeah. I, so I actually I, have a script that I made in 2016 called Duck, Duck, Goose. That, this movie, no. Just, it's not another Aqua <laughs> we Slash. We can't do it again. We can't survive another Aqua Slash. <laughs> well, I can't survive another Truth or Dare, but we That's might have That's true. To. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, uh, I would get... There's no way to make it good. Never mind. Because it's like... It's a dumb premise <laughs> from the core of it. I think it would have been... If it, if it had been rated R, they wouldn't have made as much money. So, there's that. No, you okay. That's yeah. the, that's it. That's it. It's you make, you make it, it R and you just up the gore. It's a final. De- just make it final destination. There was like no gore. Yeah, there really was hardly any gore. Like you didn't see any of the things really happen. No, because I thought it was done. Because I didn't realize it was not R in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> There's a moment when the first horny boy goes and tries to show his dick, but then gets called out on it, which makes no sense. Okay, like okay, let's break down that scene real quick. <clears throat> Let me, let me get into position. So, in this scene, he's about... <laughs> I don't want you to get into position to talk about this scene, <laughs> Eric. 
Jesus. <laughs> I need to level myself. That's all I was trying oh, to say. Oh, my God. He goes to pull out his dick. And yeah. then and they're like, his dick is small. And he's like, you know what? I'm not going to pull it out. That means his dick was small. But he had the confidence to pull it out in the beginning, right? Yeah. But so, but then he got heckled and he he wanted to he wanted everyone to think it was like a good sexy thing he was doing with his dick out. But then they were like, oh, "Your dick small." The, se- the sexy way to pull out your dick in the crowd. In in a public yeah in public in public yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, so that happens. Yikes. Um, and then the demon's like, okay, you didn't pull out your tiny dick. I'm going to make you die. <laughs> and so he goes to, like, walk off the pool table, and there's a pool cue just, like, standing up, and he goes to, like, fall on it, and some guy prevents him from falling on it, and the demon's like, oh, thank you. And then turns <laughs> around, so and funny. then, like, breaks his neck. And then he, like, slips on a pool ball and then smacks his neck. It was really fast, so you can't really see. Fast, and it just, like, it, yeah. like you would know if it was R, he would fall on that pool cue. Like, yeah. it would be, like, so much more yeah, violent. Yeah, yeah. Also, like, all of the deaths, like, Teen Wolf, slits his own throat and stabs the other guy and they both immediately die as one does Uh, i guess i mean it's not that bad which is like if i was if i was olivia and saw that i'd be like oh i guess the demon just kills you real fast and then just boom dead yeah like what does she have to what do either of them have to live for yeah well that's what i'm saying like i want to i would love to watch a sequel of this to see the global ramifications of doing this what happens? Then it's like an international manhunt while all these people are dying. They're it's just like, like, it's that time of terrorists. year. It's that time yeah. of month. Like, I, I guess I'm going to get truth or dared. Yay. Yeah, exactly. So, like... Mark it on your calendars. So, what Because are... the demon's the demons cadence isn't applied either. Because you don't understand how often yeah. the demon asks the question. Because, like, he waits for you when you're most vulnerable. If I was, like, the demon and my goal was to kill everyone, I would just, like, rapid fire. I, it wants to, like, toy with them. It does a shitty... Because it's, like, it's smarter than us. And literally all it does is just, like... Tell your dad you're gay. He's like, I'm gay. And the dad's like, I'm okay with that. And then demon's well, like, like, I guess make you beg for his life. And it's Fuck. like, tell him your secrets. Yeah. And it's like, destroying. So I don't, you don't understand why the demon's motivated, sure. The demon sucks. He's a bad, I believe, this is my opinion, is that he's a shitty demon. Like, in, so. in, in yeah. hell, all the other demons make fun of him. They're like, this fucking loser. <laughs> um, it fucking sucks. I want to hear your rating. Uh, okay, so real quick, too. What? Uh, <laughs> What so, what else? What else can we possibly say? The funniest thing, in my opinion, and I I experienced this because, as we established in episode zero, one of the things that really kind of brought me into the realm of horror was going to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios yes. Hollywood. Yes. Not to plug something, we're not sponsored by it, but yes. Um, and I had gone pretty much try to go every year since. Okay. Uh, to see my family because I have family out there, and then go to the Halloween Horror Nights as a fun thing to do. They made eventually like Halloween Horror Nights like started off with kind of original ideas, but eventually went to properties, which was cool for me. It was like more of like a fan servicey thing to walk around and have like Michael Myers pop out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they started to like get too branded, and so they they made uh what was it called the Horrors of Bloom House, oh, where they try shit. to make spooky mazes. Based off their properties. Is there one based off this? But they had one that was based off Truth or Dare and Unfriended. Ooh. <laughs> which I have a video of, which we can watch off the pod. That's baffling to me because Unfriended, the whole premise is it's over webcam. So how do you make a in There's like a experience? video of like Jason Blum like walking with the one, like some curator like through the haunted maze. And he's just like, oh yeah, cool. Wow. Because it's just like, it's just like a person wearing a smiley face mask and then some kid with like a pencil in his eye. Like, that's the maze. That's rad. That's the spook. You did it. It's so bad. It's so dumb. It's just like, it's poor Universal Studios was just like trying to pull in so much money. Like, they were just so desperate. Oh my god. They already. Please. Yeah, like, that's all. I mean, okay, this is how you know it's not sponsored. Universal Studios is just begging for money and they try to change things up so often and none of it lands and it's all dated and everything that's timeless is gone from it now. Wow. That's a hot day. We weren't sponsored by them, and we never will be. Never will be. <laughs> well, they're they're postponed this year, thankfully. Cause, yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, but when we come back, there's so actually, you know, Harry Potter Land. The butterbeer is delightful. It transports you into the realm of J.K. Rowling's transphobic mind. <laughs> the, Eric. <laughs> not to mention. Eric, I'm gonna rate this movie. Okay, I'm rating this movie. So wait, one more. Oh my god, I want you to rate this movie. Okay. Uh, I did find Jason Blum's house. You still have a. You still because have Because I thought I thought it'd be funny if I looked up Jason Blum's houses, because Jason Blum has has houses and his name is Jason Blum House, and they're fucking nice. And he has like five of them. <laughs> we have lost the blood. <laughs> and I rate this movie a one point five. Nice. 
And Out of what? For scares or for enjoyability? Oh, scares zero. Not an zero. option. Not an option. Zero. Negative one. Okay. But what do you give it? I say you give it a 1.5 on goodness. Yeah. And then a one for scares. You can't give it a zero. Jamie said it, not me. <laughs> I would give it a two on enjoyability. Okay. I enjoyed watching it with you. Had yeah. a great time. Okay. Well, that's... I didn't have a good time watching it. I hated watching it. Like we still did our best, but I still didn't enjoy it. You know. So like enjoyability wise, this bumps. I was thinking this ranks above it only by point five because it was a wretched film, but I still enjoyed watching it. The fact that we were like saying that it is worse than come different. at us. <laughs> um, and then I give it a one on scares. It was not scary. It wasn't gory. It wasn't suspenseful. Uh, thank you for watching this movie with me, Eric. Yeah, I mean, like, you had okay, a good time. okay, you had I'll, a good time. I'll, I'll, I'll like break character for a moment, as sure. if I was playing someone else here. I was actually possessed, but like, I had like a really good time watching it with Jamie. It was fun. It's like a good movie to put on with your friends and like make fun of and laugh at. Yeah. Um, I'll give it that. I because the worst I think thing that's you the point the right? worst thing you can do this is, is a make, sleepover movie. Yes. Yeah. The worst thing you can do is make a bad movie that's boring. Mm-hmm. The best you can do is make a bad movie that's enjoyable. <laughs> and Eric did say the whole plot before we started watching. Or he, he kept calling stuff. He's like, oh, is this going to happen in this? And I was like, that'd be ridiculous. And then it like, of course of it did. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that got me was the ending. I didn't, for some reason, didn't put it together that she was going to make a viral video about. Well, bless your heart. It's because you have standards. <laughs> and it's just. Like... How would you have ended it? How did you think it was going to end? I thought they were going to, like, think they break the curse. Yeah. And then she's like, everything's good now. And her and her friend, she's, like, dating the, the boyfriend. Her, it's her boyfriend. Oh, you now. thought the boyfriend was going to live? Yeah. How did you think the last few minutes of the movie, once the boyfriend was dead, were going to go? Where did you anticipate it going? I thought they were going to, like, defeat the demon somehow. Or, like, think they defeated the demon. But then this is, really. like, a very, 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 like, Nightmare on Elm Street thing. It was just like, oh, we defeated the demon, yay. And then, like, at, like, college. And then she's like, the professor's like, oh, we have, like, a new student to her class. It's Lucy Hale. And she's like, thank you. And she's like, why don't you introduce yourself? We only have one question for you. Truth or do. Nice. <laughs> 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 Have a film you're dying to talk about? Let us know on Instagram at Horoscope Pod with one D or on Twitter at Horoscope Pod with two Ds. Plus, if you're enjoying the show, subscribe and leave us a review. Your horoscope for this week is Smile! The connection you're about to make today will stay with you forever.